Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Hobbs. I'd like to read a book to you today called The Earth and Sky. This last week, we celebrated Earth Day. And oftentimes at school, we use Earth Day as an opportunity to review facts about the planet Earth. And we also talk about the resources that the planet Earth provides us for living and survival. And we also sometimes talk about ways that we can take care of the Earth and preserve the resources that we have. So this is a fun book that I like to share and I'd like to read it to you today. I'm gonna to be turning the camera around so you can see the pictures a little bit better as I read. The Earth and Sky. The Earth and Sky, a first discovery book. This is Earth, our planet. From the space shuttle far out in space, it looks like a small blue-green globe. And I love the pages in this book because they are, some of them are clear and transparent and I just love the effects that you get as you turn the pages. The Earth is wrapped in the air we breathe and surrounded by moist white clouds. Our atmosphere is made up mostly of two gases, nitrogen and oxygen. All living things need oxygen to survive. From space, the seven continents look like little islands floating in a giant sea. Nearly three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered by water. Dry land, majestic mountains, and low-lying plains make up the rest. Below Earth's surface, there are many different layers of rock. Deep beneath the rock, Earth's core is red hot. People, animals, and plants live above the ground. Many animals even burrow underground. All living things need oxygen to breathe and water to drink. As you look at these pictures, are there any living things that you recognize down below the surface of the earth? For millions and millions of years, rivers and streams have flowed over the Earth's surface. And on this page, you can again see below the surface of the Earth, and you can see water ways that, and paths that are below the Earth's surface as well as all the water that we can see above the Earth's surface. Ever since there has been a planet Earth, volcanoes have been erupting on it. Sometimes smoke, ash, and steam blast out of volcanoes. A volcano is an opening in the Earth's crust. During some eruptions, hot, melted rock from deep in the Earth's core flows out of the mouth of the volcano. The hot, molten rock is called lava. During the daytime, sunlight shines upon the Earth. So here's Earth over here, and here is a picture of the sun. You can see that little bit of light that shows that it's daytime on this part of the earth and this part that has a shadow is actually experiencing nighttime. The earth travels around the sun, our source of light and warmth. The earth also rotates or spins on its axis. The countries that are turned toward the sun get daylight. The earth spins on a tilt. The sun cannot heat the whole world evenly. The north and south poles are always cold, even in the summer. The south pole is the coldest place on earth. And 
the first graders this year, you might remember that the penguins live in the South Pole. On, well, in Antarctica, most of them at least. The equator is halfway between the North and South Poles. The equator gets a lot of heat from the sun. It is always hot at the equator. Earth has just one moon. On July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. From Earth, we see only the part of the moon that reflects the sun's bright light. The moon revolves around Earth just as Earth revolves around the sun. Sometimes the moon looks like a big circle in the sky. We call this a full moon. As the month goes on, we see less and less of the moon. The angle between the moon, the earth, and the sun changes as the moon moves around the earth. We see only the part of the moon that is facing the earth and reflecting the light of the sun. So here we go from the full moon, and then you see the shadow that's cast, and this bright part is the part that we can see till eventually we can't see it at all. That's called the new moon, but eventually, we start seeing the moon again until we're back to the full moon. Groups of stars seem to make shapes in the sky. Can you see any star pictures? side they have pointed out two different constellations. This constellation is called the Big Dipper. It looks, if you were to turn this around, looks like a scoop with a handle on it that's called a dipper. We used to use that for dipping in and getting water from a larger container and this smaller constellation is called the Little Dipper. And this star right over here is called the North Star. The white lines show the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, and the North Star. And then all of these planets plus the sun make up our solar system. Spacecraft have already taken pictures of many of the planets that revolve around our sun. Perhaps someday you will be able to visit one of the other eight planets in our solar system. How exciting that would be. So we have the Sun, and then the planets we have are Mercury, Venus, Earth, that's our planet, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. If you were an astronaut on the moon, you'd see the Earth softly glowing in a dark sky. And that is the end of the Earth and Sky. So that is the end of the Earth and Sky. If you'd be interested in borrowing this book, let your teacher know, and I'd be happy to loan it out to you in your next Friday packet. Hope you have a good day.